how the nature produces oxygen we breathe. Most people will think photosynthesis. And that photosynthesis is being thought of coming from rainforests or trees or plants. But that's only partially correct. Even environmental groups call the Amazon rainforest as the lungs of the earth because it said it contributes 20% of the oxygen we breathe. But that's, again, not true. Before we proceed, please click on the subscription icon below and the notification bell. And also, the like button. The purpose of this video is to explain scientifically in real science and empirically why most of the oxygen we breathe do not come from rainforest or trees. Before we go on further to find out how nature produces the oxygen we breathe, let's check back in time and uh, we delve into why we need oxygen anyway. Now, there are two groups on this earth, the so-called autotrophs and the heterotrophs. Autotrophs manufacture their own food. These are plants, algae, and many bacteria. Usually, it is by photosynthesis. The heterotrophs, on the other hand, well, just wait for the photosynthesis products and prepare that into its own food. And uh, these heterotrophs are animals like us, fungi, many bacteria. So this, there is an intertwined cycle of carbon dioxide, water, and oxygen because of this food chain for the autotrophs and the heterotrophs. Now on the origin of oxygen or how it is produced by nature, as listed on the right side, many thought that most of our oxygen comes from the terrestrial plants or the rainforests. In fact, the Amazon rainforest is tagged as the lungs of the earth because it supplies 20% of oxygen that humans and animals breathe. But that's not correct. Terrestrial plants, all the rainforests, which is of 2015, they point for trillion trees on earth contribute only 28% of the oxygen needed by all breathing organisms. The other source of oxygen in the, our atmosphere is the photolysis of water vapor. Well, this is just like the photosynthesis except in photosynthesis, there is the synthesis in the chlorophyll. But in this case, uh, on water vapor photolysis, it is only a light reaction. That means water is split by light into electrons and protons and eventually produces oxygen gas. Now, the third one, which is the most important, is the phytoplanktons photosynthesis in the oceans, all the oceans on Earth. And they are effective because of their characteristic so-called CO2 concentration mechanism. That's CCM. Rainforests contribute 28% only to the Earth's oxygen, but most, about 70%, is produced by marine plants called phytoplanktons. The remaining 
Earth's oxygen supply comes from the photolysis of water vapor in the atmosphere by the sunlight. But most of the oxygen was not made by plants at all. So who's doing all the photosynthesis? Well, it's happening in the oceans by little tiny microscopic critters called phytoplankton. All these little green blobs. If you blow them up, they're actually really pretty. Click on the subscription icon below and also the like button. Now, the oxygen, the water, and the carbon dioxide in the biosphere interacting with the lithosphere and the atmosphere. There is no loss or gain because what prevails there is the First law of thermodynamics, so-called conservation of mass and energy. Because others are worried about fire burning California or the Amazon forest or the outback of Australia. But you see, the funny thing guys, when you burn, well, I mean, burning forests is not good because diversity and other biodiversity and other important things there are destroyed. But in terms of carbon dioxide and oxygen, which is the main topic here, if the forest is burned down, one time there will be a huge release of carbon dioxide. But after that, there will be no more release of carbon dioxide due to photorespiration and cellular respiration. Now, unknown to most people, forests also produce carbon dioxide. In fact, half of the oxygen they absorb, which is converted to cellulose starch or sugar, is converted back into carbon dioxide during the, resp the cellular respiration process. But by nature equilibrium, there is a net positive amount of oxygen released by plants in the rainforest or the terrestrial plants for that matter. And this is equivalent to 28%. Now, well, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, in 1994 and in 1995, Gifford and Amthor, correspondingly, respectively, found out that about 50%, half, half of, of the CO2 assimilated annually for, through photosynthesis is released back to the atmosphere by plant cellular respiration. In fact, in the combined research of RIPE, which means realizing increased photosynthesis efficiency, and 
UNIPCC. UNIPCC means United Nations Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change. They conducted an experiment in a greenhouse. Now at that time, about five years ago, the concentration of, of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was 400 ppm. Now they tried to determine, because normally plants loses oxygen through a process called photorespiration. This is a side reaction of oxygen with the ingredients inside the chlorophyll, competing the reaction of carbon dioxide with the ingredients inside the chlorophyll and mainly RUBP or Rebulose 1, 5 biphosphate. The loss due to photorespiration indicated here as loss to PR as encircled in red is 31%. Now when they increase their CO2 concentration from 400 ppm to 450 ppm in a greenhouse experiment the photorespiration loss decreased from 31 to 25 percent. And then when they in increased the CO2 concentration further to 1,000 ppm, the photorespiration loss has reduced further to 14 percent. Now, if we look at this, this is the reversible equation of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. During photosynthesis, with the help of energy from the sun, carbon dioxide and water forms glucose or cellulose or starch plus oxygen. This is the extra production here is the one we breathe, which is equivalent, again, I have to repeat it, 20% of the total supply. Now, on the other hand, during respiration, half of this oxygen, because it will also consume about half of what it has produced carbohydrates, will react in the process of res cellular respiration to produce back carbon dioxide and water and release some energy and heat. Now, during burning of trees in the forests or the woodlands, my personal experience, this is personal experience, for every big tree burned down or cut down in a few hours after the fire, there will be five or even seven seedlings of trees a sort of jumping around, very happy that they have the chance to grow. So the ratio is one is to seven or one is to seven or one is to six. So when you're born if a forest or woodland, you will have eventually more trees. That is why they estimate earlier by environmentalists that there are 400 billion trees around the earth was proven to be wrong because when satellite of NASA using a spatial algorithm in combination with AWS or the Amazon Web Service, they found out that there are 3.04 trillion trees in the world, which is seven times than the estimated quantity by most people, including the environmentalists, using satellite picture only without the algorithm. Same way here. Look at those seedlings. Very, very happy. The other reason why phytoplanktons are the ones supporting life by producing 70% of the, our oxygen requirement, requirement for breathing is that it's simply the number. There are too many of them. Look at this. In the Austral summer. Austral meaning south. That's why you can see the Antarctic continent and Australia and the tip of Africa. There are too many of them, not only in the south, but as you can see, as indicated in the upper right 
corner it's called boreal salmon because it's in the north so there are still plenty in the north of phytoplanktons the one in green or blue that's phytoplanktons well the black sea do not want to be left behind they also produce a lot of oxygen because there are lots of phytoplanktons also there how many trees are there in a forest what about a country how about in the whole world the answer we now know is that our planet is home to 3.04 trillion trees that's actually almost eight times more than we thought as previous estimates were only based on satellite pictures but now we have data not just on how much land is covered in forest but how dense those forests are as well please click on the subscription icon below and also the like button